Hello and welcome to Two Car Bros. Today we're going to show you to replace the rear brake shoes and drum for a Toyota Tundra between the years of 2000 and 2006. The first thing we need to do is jack the vehicle safely in the air. I have a link in the description for an excellent video on that. And then we need to remove the wheel. On this particular repair, our drum is stuck, so we're going to use some WD-40 to spray between the rear drum and the axle flange. This will penetrate down to where the uh, problem is. Next, we're going to grab a hammer, and being careful not to hit the uh, wheel studs, we're going to uh, you know, strike the drum, and hopefully this will wiggle it loose. You just got to put a little, little elbow grease in there, and it should come right off. Here's another good tip, our brake assembly area here is absolutely filthy with brake dust, so we're going to hang a bucket right here and then just uh, dump some water all over the brake assembly. You could even use a hose if you like, just you know, don't use a high pressure washer or anything. You just want to get the brake dust off of there so it doesn't end up all over your hands and uh, make it really tough to work on because the brake dust can uh, be toxic for you to breathe and is also a little bit slippery so it's 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 tough to work with so wait until it's dry and then you can continue the repair next we need to remove this retentioning pin Next, we need to remove the adjuster spring. Next, we need to remove the parking brake link. Next, we need to remove both shoe hold down springs. Next, we can remove the adjuster screw. Now we can remove our brake shoes. Next, we need to remove the hardware that is mounted on our old brake shoes. A good tip is to use your cell phone or any other camera to take a picture of the way your shoes were before you took them apart, just as a reference uh, for when you're putting them back together. Please note that both of these pins we're showing you here on both shoes need to be transferred to the new shoes. Next we can compare our old shoes to our new ones to make sure that they're identical.
Now we can transfer our old shoes hardware to our new ones. Next, we need to take apart our adjuster screw and clean it with carburetor spray and then put it back together while we're lubricating it with general silicone grease. Next, we can replace our brake shoes. Next, we need to replace our shoe hold down springs. This will hold our brake shoes in place while we reinstall all the other hardware. Next, we need to replace our star wheel adjuster screw. Next, we need to replace our emergency parking line. Next, we need to reattach our adjuster spring. Next, don't forget to reinstall your horseshoe clamp. Sorry, I don't have any footage of it going back together, but I'll just tell you how it goes back together. 
Uh, you need to separate it, so you need to spread it out like we did when we removed it, but this time you're gonna spread it, put it onto the uh, pin here from the brake shoe, and then you're gonna use a pair of channel locks and you're going to uh, close that clamp back down so it's nice and secure. Before we go any further, we need to make sure that this spring is located behind this mounting hardware. While the drum brake is off, we need to adjust the brake shoes so they're as out as possible. That way when we slide the brake drum on, they will be barely touching it. That's really what you want. Next we can compare our old brake drum to our new one to make sure that it's identical. Once we're sure it's identical, we're going to use some carburetor spray to clean off the manufacturing grease that comes on it from factory. See, the first time we tried to put on the drum, we adjusted the brake shoes out too far, so we're going to pull the drum back off and adjust it a little more inward, um, so that way the brake shoes are just barely touching the brake drum, so it'll slide right on. Now we can reinstall our tire, making sure we bolt it on in a star pattern, and if you are using a torque wrench, you're going to want to torque it to about 100 foot-pounds in a star pattern. Thank you so very much for watching this video, however you are not complete after a job like this it is an awesome idea to bleed your brakes. You can click here in the video to take you to that video where I've already done it, it's a great video I assure you. Or you can click the link in the description if you're on mobile or annotations aren't working for some strange reason. I thank you so very much for watching, if you have any questions please go to 2carpros.com.